everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If you haven't already seen my previous Tacky Tuesdays, they are just videos where I try to break down short EMS cardiology lessons, typically under five minutes. And today we're going to be talking all about hypercalcemia on an EKG. So first, let's talk a little bit about what hypercalcemia actually is. Hypercalcemia is a term that refers to higher than normal levels of calcium in the blood. This condition can occur for a multitude of reasons. Although hypercalcemia is confirmed through blood work in the hospital, this electrolyte imbalance can manifest on an EKG. Depending on the severity of the imbalance, the patient may experience very serious symptoms. And chances are, guys, we're not going to know that this patient is hypercalcemic unless maybe it's a long distance transport where they've been diagnosed with it, but if you pay close attention to your EKGs, you may just be able to catch signs of it. And just for reference, I know being in the pre-hospital setting, we don't deal with levels a lot because we don't have access to blood work, but mild hypercalcemia is between 10.5 to 11.9 milligrams per deciliter, where moderate is 12 to 13.9, and severe is 14 and above. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of reference for that. So let's talk about some of the characteristics of of hypercalcemia on an EKG. So your rate, depending on the severity, it could be completely normal, but if it is very severe, it could be bradycardic. Your P waves, they are typically present and upright, but in the most severe cases of hypercalcemia, they may not even be present. Your QRS complexes, once again, I feel like I keep saying depending on the severity, but they could be normal to wide. The more severe it is, the wider they can become. One of the dead giveaways of hypercalcemia is shortened QT intervals. Other EKG possibilities, you may see Osborne waves and if you haven't already seen my video on Osborne waves I'll go ahead and link it in the upper right hand corner right now and you may also get EKGs that mimic a STEMI so you may see elevation in V1 and V2 which would typically indicate a septal MI but in this case it would just be due to the hypercalcemia the development of AV blocks is a possibility and unfortunately the deterioration to VFib VTAC or torsades can totally happen with very very high levels of calcium some causes and risk factors of hypercalcemia can include hyperparathyroidism, and this actually makes up 85 to 90 percent of cases of hypercalcemia. Other causes could be vitamin D or calcium overdoses, Addison's disease, myeloma, sarcoidosis, renal failure, thiazide, diuretics, and other medications, and immobilization. Some of the signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia could include muscle weakness, bone pain, hypertension, polyuria, or just excessive of urination, kidney stones, nausea and vomiting, dysrhythmias, and ultimately cardiac arrest. Let's take a look at hypercalcemia on a strip. Taking a look at this strip, you can see that the QT interval is definitely shortened. I mean, you can see it in V1 through V6, and they are pretty obvious. And if you look closely, it looks like the P waves have pretty much disappeared. So this is probably a pretty severe case of hypercalcemia. If you want to take a quick look at this and where the arrows are pointing to, those are what we call Osborne waves. Like I said, I have a whole video on that. I have a whole Instagram post on Osborne waves. They're typically associated with hypothermia, but they are in extreme cases associated with hypercalcemia as well. All right, possible EMS treatments for hypercalcemia in the 911 EMS setting. To be honest, most likely we're not going to know that a patient is hypercalcemic. So I basically did routine treatments on this 12 lead vitals. If you're lucky enough to catch the hypercalcemia on the strip, definitely report your findings to the hospital, oxygen, IV access, and then just treating your patient's complaint. That is the most important thing. I always stress this. If your patient is awake and alert, you want to treat their complaint as best you can and just continue to monitor them, especially if you note the hypercalcemia, which like I said, chances are rare. But if you note it, you want to continue to monitor them for deterioration and always search for underlying causes, ask questions, and get a great medical history. And that, guys, is about all I have for hypercalcemia on an EKG. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye!